across the Sailing Channel blogosphere, performance sailing yachts are being built, bought, tested and discussed, which is wonderful. Who doesn't want to get from A to B at the fastest speed possible? We are almost sailing at the wind speed. We're getting 4.2 knots of wind, incredible, and we're doing 3.1 to 3.2 knots. Eat your heart out, all you new trimarans with your high performance sails and light hulls. Don't mention the current. Oh, yeah, well, we might have a bit of current in there. When our captain Rob and his partner Phil Stubbs rowed across the Atlantic Ocean in a seven meter plywood boat, they had a motto, light boats are fast boats. They didn't carry anything extra that didn't serve a purpose, even cutting their toothbrushes in half to save weight and arguing over whether to take a few meters of nylon fishing line. Ironically, our catamaran Javelo is neither performance nor light. She is a production boat better suited to cruising coral islands and crossing oceans. If she could talk, she would complain at all the extra weight we force her to carry. This girl is heavy. So if you're in the market for light boats, then you should look no further than the New Zealand lightweight men's double, fast and sleek. At racing weight, these men must weigh in at 70 kilograms. Two weeks ago, Finn weighed 77 kilograms. Today, six foot two Finn learns one, whether he has made weight, and two, whether he can still perform. It is 5.45 a.m. And I am off to sweat. Uh, I have weigh in at seven, well, between seven and eight o'clock. I've got to sweat out approximately one kg of weight. Fun times. I'm 71, well, actually, just over 71 kilos, and I got to weigh in at 70. This is the life of a lightweight. Last day of sweating. Should be there five minutes to go, I reckon. I uh, came down from around 73 yesterday morning. Uh, I sweated out a couple kgs last night, and yeah, I've got about half a kg to drop this morning. Yeah, the only other sport really that does this, that I can, oh, I guess jockeys, but the main one I guess would be MMA, like UFC, if you've ever those. The difference with them is, they do this the day before, like so they weigh in the day before they fight, so they have a, a 24 hours to recover, whereas we have to weigh in two hours before our race, so we have two hours to refuel, well technically one and a half because you get on about half an hour before you race, so it's pretty tricky. Back in Malaysia, our boat is back up to weight. Props replaced, sail drive boots stuck down and anti-fouled in preparation for splashing today. Once back in the water, we'll have a little shakedown motor around the harbour to check everything is functioning as it should. So we have found that the alarm is still on with the uh, sail drive membrane, suggesting there's uh, another leak has gone in through the first membrane, the outer and the inner. Spoke to Robbie, he said just it cannot possibly be uh, the membrane. He says it has to be the sensor is at fault. So we're going to go for a test run, go into the dock, and then we'll check the sensor. If you can't hear the alarms because we disabled the alarms because they're freaking annoying. Yeah, we disabled the alarms because they're freaking annoying. Those lousy alarms. Who made those? Who invented those lousy cotton picking alarms? There was a cat that went to sea and the name of the cat was Milo. <laughs> She's not very happy out here. I better take her back inside. It's a bit tricky, isn't it? For a little cat. What the heck is happening? Are we doing a little sea trial, Rob? Yeah. We're going to give it a burst. We're going to go flat out. Whoa, that jeez. <laughs> okay, it's going back. Check that new propeller stays on. So we've discovered a problem with starboard propeller putting it back on it turns out there's an internal kind of a bush for want of a better word that seems to have pushed out from the outer propeller and the propellers literally off balance as a result now I have noticed this before I had some guys come over had Robbie come and have a look at actually Nandy and, and they said man that's no nah, that's not good coincidentally the last time I was at Reback and I had been looking for a long time for a spare propeller 
should one actually come off and I've heard about propellers just coming off randomly I thought it would be good to have another propeller spare and one turned up here last time I was at Reback Marina and here it is I bought it as a spare so I'm going to and it's a good one it's but look it hasn't got our favorite prop speed on it I'm just going to have to grin and bear it hopefully whatever this anti fell is it's okay we haven't got time to muck around sourcing another thing of prop speed unfortunately so I'll just hope it works and we'll swap it out oh oops The sea trial appeared to go according to plan, our heavy old girl performing well under pressure. But how is our young man faring in his rowing trial? Three lightweights racing for two seats in the double skull. Oh, we can just make it. So... So what happened? What did you weigh in at? Yeah, so I stood it out this morning for just like half an hour and then we can a 69.6 units. <laughs> Shoot, way under. Jack really didn't come and help do seat racing, so he was like the the fourth guy. Yeah. So I was with Jack first. Yeah. And they they jumped out on us, but then we came back in like middle K and went like maybe half a length ahead. But yeah, we just like had no wine, just it just started getting slower and slower, unfortunately. Oh. Um. So they came back through us. And I was absolutely screwed after that. Um, like, really bad. Yeah. And like, to the point where I just felt like crying and like <laughs> not being out of row the next race. Oh. Yeah, really, really faded. Gee. But I um, got on the bike and spun it out a minute. Like, I didn't want to, I couldn't. Well, I didn't want to eat anything because I just felt like I was going to throw it back up. Right. But I did manage to get a bit of stuff down in the end. Um, and felt better when Spook got back on board in the end, Matt. So, what, uh, um, sorry, how long off did you have? An hour and a half. Okay. Between races. Yep. Yeah, anyway, yep. so yep. I felt refreshed pretty much, like going back up. I don't know, I just didn't give it enough in the first K with Matt. Just because of that feeling, I guess like you don't want to like blow yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So our first K wasn't great. Um, Chris and Jack like smoked their first K. They put a length on us. Like might have been edging out to clear water. I couldn't really tell. But our second K was way better, and we ended up coming back through them. Well, coaching back actually, and in the last like two fifty, just like went through them and put a length on them. But. Chris and Matt's gap was bigger. Yep. So I think Chris won the first one by three seconds, and then I won the second one by like one and a half seconds or something. Right. Um, and me and Matt did go, me and Matt had the fastest time, but the conditions had changed and stuff. And yeah, the yeah. important thing is the gaps. Anyway, so Chris, Chris won. Yeah, okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So that's the, that's the self-selected seat then? Ah, uh, so World Cup 3, yeah. Okay. So you'll be racing the single at the World Cup? Yeah. So Finn lost the seat by one to one and a half seconds to Chris, the incumbent. So it's going to be Chris and Matt in the double for the for the World Cup that they first race they go to internationally. But actually the good thing is Finn's getting the single skull, so he'll, he'll still be going and he's still going to be in the mix racing at Lucerne I think it is for this first international race and then he gets the opportunity to um, well hopefully race the single skull at the under 23 world rowing championships but there is still a chance that he they may re trial the double while they're in Europe between the World Cup oh well, actually after the under 23 world champs <clears throat> and the world rowing champs the elites they may there's a chance they may do another heat trial because it was so close and given it was the first time that Finn has got down to the weight at 70 he still performed very well but if he does it better he'll be holding his weight down for longer uh, you would think he would he will only get better 
and the selectors will be aware of that. Um, the other two scholars will be aware of that as well. And that's going to be pushing them to make sure they get the best out of themselves. So it's, got, it's a great little competitive triangle of young fellas they're having a go for this critical boat to try and get to the Olympic Games. <clears throat> this regatta, the world champs this year serves as a qualification regatta. So the first, I think it's the first seven or eight crews at the world champs, that country automatically qualifies for the Olympics next year. Not the individuals in the boat, but the boat itself. Look, even if it doesn't go Finn's way this year, they will have to start again next year for the preparations for the Olympic Games. They'll be trialling flat out all through the next months of summer months in, back in New Zealand. Way a bit, mate. So that stops about about here. So we have. Um, sorry, we didn't film this, but we took the sail bag off a few days ago because it's been some of the threads coming apart. And to do that, we lifted the main, and obviously lift the main again to put the bag on. And a friend of ours, Kiwi friend of ours, Kylie, stitched it all up and uh, added some patching around where the lazy jacks go through the connections for. So it had to be done as a preventative thing from getting any worse. A stitch in time saves 47. As the saying goes. We have a little problem here at the clue of the main. It's um, a similar thing that happened when we were up on the west coast of Australia where at the other end of the solar, the tack, where it just <laughs> broke away while we're sailing. And this is threatening to do exactly the same thing here on the clue. Um, I think it's very unusual. I was told when the tack broke away, they said, wow, that's unusual. That doesn't happen very often. And it's happening at this end now, which makes me think uh, it might be just some thread is um, not good quality or the actual um, seat belt material is probably not good quality. Bung batch, a bung batch or three. And um, so when we go, we're going to have to take the main off and we'll, we will be getting this repaired at some point, maybe down in Pankor where there is a, a Doyle's representative uh, sail maker down there, so we'll talk to him when we're there. Uh, you come and feed it in here, right? Come up, stand here. Hold, hold on, don't let go. Can you feed that in? Got it? Yep, I got it. Teamwork, guys. Great teamwork. Mate, it's hard. Yeah, it's getting tighter, I know. Super wet out there. Uh, it's come to the change of the season. We've been having quite a bit of rain on and off. And when it comes down, it really comes down. But it's giving the boat a nice wash and it's kind of telling us it's time for us to get on the move. Just had a catch up with my old mate Rob Wardell. Uh, turned up last night actually unannounced, just turned up and uh, we had a lovely little catch up him and his wife Sonia and their kids. Gosh, I haven't seen them for, for years. But Rob and Sonia, actually Sonia is an international rower. Uh, Rob in particular is quite a well-known New Zealand rower. He won the Olympic gold medal and the single skull at the uh, Sydney Olympic Games. Very good rower. And Rob and I actually rode together in the double skull for several years for our club. We were like Laurel and Hardy, Tawley and Shorty. <laughs> Yeah, it was good to catch up, really nice to catch up. And I, 
had a chat with Rob about some of the, the, his philosophy on what it is to be a winner. I think you might find it quite interesting. <laughs> well, win at what, mate? Win at life? Win well, at sport? Win really. at business? Yeah. Let's try sport for starters. Okay. Um, what does it take to do well in sport? What does it take to win? How long you got? Yeah. Okay, so I think you have to have... Well, for a start, you have to have a, a, a good physiological ability suited to what you're trying to do, right? So yeah. I was never going to be a 100-metre sprinter. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah, never yeah. going to happen. Yeah. But um, for me personally, I had a, a physiology that was suited to rowing, and I, was, I guess I was lucky to find a sport that I was well suited to. Nice. I think it's actually quite a good thing for young people to think about is uh, you can be good at lots of things, but trying to find out what you might be brilliant at or finding the things in life that you really love and you enjoy, and I was lucky I found that um, for my sport in rowing, I enjoyed it, I loved it. Uh, I think you have to be very driven, you have to actually want to do it, and you might call it passion, you might call it drive, whatever, but you, know, you get up in the morning and you want to do it, like it, you're really motivated to do it, and you wanna do the extra training, extra miles. I think those two things are probably the key ingredients yeah. um, to, uh, to get you to a, to a high, high level. Um, and then after that, uh, there's a whole raft of things come down to it really around, um, I think resilience is a, is a big deal. Uh, yeah, life's not easy, sport's not easy, you'll have so many knockbacks and setbacks and people telling you can't do stuff on the way to trying to achieve your dream. And so being resilient and having a deep, deep self-belief I think is a, is a pretty critical thing too. So no matter what people tell you, whether you can do it or you can't, you just know you're going to do it. So. That's a few things that come to mind anyway, mate. <laughs> On a that, cold, wet, sort of autumn morning here in Cambridge. <laughs> yeah. That is absolutely blooming marvellous. Thank you. Um, Profound stuff. Any words for Foo? Finn? For Finn. Mm. Go hard, Finn. Loving, your, loving your, uh, your efforts, mate. Keep it up. It's awesome to see you punching through and doing what you're doing. And uh, I think you've got such an exciting future ahead of you. And, uh, you know, you're just a... You're just a so far ahead of where your dad ever got to, mate. So. <laughs> that was coming. That was inevitable. Wasn't that was it? inevitable. Hey. That was <laughs> no, it's very cool to see uh, see you following on from what your dad did, and I know um, you know your mum was an exceptional athlete too. So yeah. uh, between um, the three of you and uh, all the different skill sets that are there, I think there's some really exciting stuff to come, and I'm looking forward to following it, mate. I'll be uh, be there cheering cheering on from the sidelines. <laughs>